All right, hey everyone. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can track a clip in After Effects and bring the tracking over to Blender to create a 3D object and then bring the 3D object back into After Effects. So I'm just gonna use, I have the camera spin around here, kind of all crazy. And my goal is to have something tracked. So we're gonna pick uh, this clip. So what I'm gonna do is find where a good tracking spot is here. You can use obviously any clip you want. I think right around here, when it starts being a little more normal. So yeah, let's click here. I'm just gonna split this. And all I need to do is find camera tracker. I'm gonna place that on there and it's gonna track the background for me. I'm looking at third quality. I put it up to full quality. Now, the only thing you need to know is I did pay for an add-on to for Blender, which lets me carry over the tracking markers or the tracking information, the keyframe information from the tracker to Blender. It cost me $10, but I found this was the quickest way I could do it, and I really like it. Obviously, you don't want to pay $10. You don't, you don't need to do this, but I'll leave a link in the description for this. It's probably worth it if you're going to make cool 3D objects in your montages or in anything, really. But I'm going to use a Halo montage as an example. So I purchased that, and I'll show you how you actually add it, because when I ended up downloading it, you just get a Python file. So tracking has already finished here. We'll track onto the guy later. But let's open up Blender. And I'll just show you first how you add that extension or that plugin. I already have it added here. If I, if I stretch this out, you can see two blender here, but I believe you go file preferences. Let's find out. We'll find out together. Yeah, we go preferences, add on, and then you can go install and just click it and it installs it in there. So yeah, that's all you have to do. You just install, you just click on that Python link that you're going to get from the download. So what's super nice is this is tracked and now I'm going to have it track to the guy, I guess I would have preferred the background, but we'll have it track to him. I click on these three squares, go right click, create null and camera. So it's here and you notice our composition is really long. It's actually going to grab all of it. But for now, we'll just focus on this. If I click the camera and go, U, it brings up all my keyframes. Now that we've copied our position and orientation keyframes in blender here, I want to delete the current ca camera that's there. I don't need it because I'm going to create my own. So let's delete and opening up my add ons thing here. I'm going to go create camera. Now, if I make this a little larger and I change this to the graph editor, you can see that there is a camera here. And matter of fact, I'll just move this around so that the box is in, excuse me, in camera. Let's find it somewhere around here. Now if I hit O on my number pad, I can go to the camera and see it whip around. Let's get out of there. Let's click on camera and let's find out the exact frames that this camera is using. It looks like frame 28 to frame 40 is what it's using. So if I click output properties and go start frame, let's go 29 and end frame. Let's put it as 40. Let's change the frame rate to what it is, which was 59. Now I can just play and you can see the camera whips by really fast. Now, if I click O again on the number pad, it goes to viewing that camera, but I want to see the background. So luckily enough, I exported the video from After Effects. So I have this video here and all I have to do is click on camera. There's a little green camera tool here. Click background images, drop it down, add image, switch to movie clip, open. And I'm going to find it here. So if I go VFX, I can find it right here. And I click alpha and put that up to 100. And you can see, let me make the, this a little bigger. Let's go timeline back to the timeline view. Oh, now I gotta make that bigger again. That's annoying. You can see the cubes there, it's just flying around. You can move it back in space a little better. Let's see, let's make it look like it fits a little bit better. Yeah, so it looks like the cube's there. Now let's add our own object. We'll just leave the cube for now. But luckily enough, I made a lot of 3D objects in the past. They're not very good, but they're free to you to they're free for you to download in the description. If you want to download them, they're in my cell fi. All you have to do is put a zero in and they're free to download. But let's go their object files. So we're gonna go import dot uh, obj. We're gonna import my overkill one here. Now we can't see it because it's actually massive, so I'm just gonna move and find where it is. You can see it's a way too big. So I'm gonna go scale, 
click in the white here, bring it down quite a bit. Let's, let's try to line it up where the box is for now, then we'll uh, adjust everything else after that. So there, it's around the boxes, hit O, I'm going back to my camera view. I'm going to click on this object, I'm going to rotate it. So it's facing us here. Might be too... So yeah, the object's just flying around in 3D space, you can see. Maybe we don't want it to look like it's in front of the guy. You could go over here and uh, move it further back. Oh, I clicked record, didn't want to do that. And let's move it over here, and this box is just being funny now, but we'll keep it there. So you can see these frames, just ignore the first frame because that's not usable. But these ones, it has objects tracked, and they're in the space here, so it uses the camera tracking pretty good. Now let's animate the object just to make it a little more interesting. I'm going to click on the overkill. I'm going to go down to object properties, and on rotate, I'm just going to add a keyframe for all of them. Go to the end. Let's rotate it like this and add a keyframe for that as well so now at least the object is rotating and it's tracked in there now we're gonna make it look a little nicer for the output not very nice because this tutorial isn't about that but we'll make it look somewhat nice so i like to go to my rendering and change it to cycles because it just always looks nicer and let's view what it actually looks like here and we're gonna add some lights so shift a adds light and we're going to just add a sun and cop out and have the sun light everything for us and i'm going to move it over the objects something like this go back to our camera view if i hit f12 it'll show me what it looks like rendered so there's the object not very good there's no colors to it yet you can see what that frame looks like rendered what i'm going to do now just to make sure i don't mess this up is in my output settings is it output settings no sorry in render properties under film we're gonna click transparent that way it'll only render oh i clicked the wrong button that way it'll only render um the object and not the background so you can see it's a little needs to be a little brighter by the looks of it here so let's just brighten up both of our lights so there's a light that already came in the object we're gonna just crank this up to 2000 and the sun i'm gonna put up to strength of five Hopefully the lighting helps. If I hit F12 again, I can see it's still a little noisy, but I could up the quality of it if I really wanted to, which would be in our render settings. I could up more render points, but for now we're gonna keep it like that. I mean, the colors aren't right, so I'm gonna click on the object. Object, and if I go down to where it says material properties, you'll see there's two here. On the first one, I believe are the stars, so I'm gonna change that to glossy bring down the roughness and I'm going to change the color to yellow. Now for the second one, I'm going to change to more of a metal look. So let's have it a bit of a grayish, just slightly. We'll bring up the metallic all the way. And there's a few other things I forget exactly. You should really be playing around with this. But if I hit F12, now you can see it looks a little better. It's still pretty dark here, but we're going to add actually an uh, we could add HDR in the background so it reflects better, but we're not going to go through that in this tutorial. We're just going to make sure we have an object here that looks pretty good. But for now, this is what we're going to use. So I have this saved, and all we have to do to render it, because we've already went into our render settings, our render settings, and we picked the start point, and we picked the end point. Now we have to make sure... I keep it as a PNG sequence to make sure it's RGB, RGBA. That way it keeps the alpha file here. And let's pick a location. We're just going to go desktop. We're going to make a new folder. Let's call it one for now. I suggest not doing things on the desktop, but I'm doing it for the tutorial. All I have to do is go render, render animation, and it's going to render it out frame by frame. And then I'll get back to you in After Effects to see how it looks once this is done rendering. All right, so I exported the frames here. And I'm actually just not going to save it, I'd like save this project because it's a simple tutorial. But I'm back back in After Effects, I'll delete that one, and I'm going to import the frame. So this is an old one that I actually messed up, but if I go to desktop, I can find my one folder. Some of these views are so useless. So I click on it, make sure PG, PNG sequence is selected in that checkbox, and go OK. Now if I bring it onto my timeline, I should be able to line it up here. And remember, we had one extra frame we don't need. Yeah. So now, 
Boom, it's just in. Oh, let me bring this over. It, our objects are just in After Effects right there. Obviously, I didn't make them look that nice, but it's just showing you that you can bring them right into After Effects. I would suggest making this a comp, or pre-comping this whole thing, adding a shake or a camera shake and depth of field. So it really feels like they're actually in the scene and the camera is real. But yeah, it's just a simple example. You can just track, it looks like I'm one frame off actually this way. There we go. It looks like it's there. So yeah, nice and simple. And I mean, it's really unlimited what you can do. What's nice is I went to where people 3D print stuff and they have a big catalog of like Halo guns and Halo helmets. And I have, I'm using them in my next montage. I have some cool effects I don't wanna show you because it's spoilers, but you can really go crazy with it. I mean, it's a $10 plugin and I mean, it's up to you to create anything else from there. So hopefully that's been useful. If you know another way to do it without paying the $10 for the plugin, just leave it down in the comments so people can see. But I thought it was really cool. Thanks guys and I'll catch you in the next video.